Hi all, in this video I will be explaining about some of the classical electromagnetic wave absorbers. First of all, I will explain about the basic principle of classical absorber and some of the main configurations that are available. So the absorbers basically work on the principle of impedance matching. The main component of uh, absorbers are they will be having some absorbing structures which will be packed by a conducting plate. Because of this packing, when a wave is incidenting on it, there won't be any transmission because this metallic plate will reflect back what is incidenting on it. So there will be only reflection and the wave which is inside these absorbing structures. The reflection from this structure mainly depends upon the impedance mismatch between the uh, structure and free space impedance. So the reflection coefficient can be defined as which is equal to Z in minus Z0 by Z in plus Z0 where Z in is the total impedance of the structure and Z0 is the free space impedance. This indicates that when the total input impedance is equal to the free space impedance, the reflection coefficient becomes zero. That is, there won't be any reflection from the structure. So if we can impart some loss into these absorb absorbing structures, the, all the wave which is incidenting on this can be dissipated inside the structure. So that is the basic principle of absorbers. Some of the main configurations that are available are Salisbury screen, Jawman absorber, Dallin batch layer, and geometric transition layer absorbers. I'll be explaining the details of this configuration in next slide. First one is Salisbury screen. It consists of a resistive layer which is backed by a metallic ground plane at lambda by 4 distance. This is the equivalent transmission line model of the Salisbury screen. It can be considered as a parallel combination of resistive sheet and the metallic ground plane. Because of this quarter wave distance, the impedance of this metallic ground plane become infinite. So the total impedance can be represented as 1 by Z in is equal to 1 by Rs plus 1 by infinity. From this equation, we can see that when the impedance of this resistive sheet become equal to Z in, that is 377 ohm, we can obtain absorption from this structure. The main disadvantage of Salisbury screen are it can provide only absorption in narrow frequency range and it is not promising for oblique incidence also. Next one is Raman absorber. It is a multi-layer structure which consists of multiple layers of resistive sheets separated by metallic ground structure. These resistive sheets are separated by lambda by 4 distance. Due to these multiple layers, it can provide wider band of operations. The resistive sheet having lesser impedance are arranged near to the metallic ground plane and the sheet having higher impedance are arranged to the free space. Because of this, it will allow the gradual penetration of incident electromagnetic wave. The main advantage of this configuration is the bandwidth improvement. The main disadvantages are larger thickness and additional weight. Next is talent back layer. It consists of a homogeneous low-sea dielectric or magnetic material backed by a metal plate. This is the equivalent transmission line of the model. Based on this, if we can properly choose the electromagnetic parameters of this dielectric or magnetic material, it can provide absorption characteristics in narrow band frequency range. The st structure bandwidth can be enhanced to wider range by using multiple layers of dielectric structures. Next is geometric transition absorbers. They usually consist of carbon loaded low density foam having geometric transition from free space into low C media. The geometric shapes are usually pyramids or wedges made up of rubber or plastic foam loaded with electrically low C carbon material. 
These type of absorbers are usually used to construct anechoic chambers for microwave measurements. Okay, that's all regarding the classical absorber. Thank you so much for listening.